Is that the Leeds Sheffield? Side, uh, Sheffield? Okay. The Leeds and Sheffield, yeah, okay. Good, huh? So what are, you, what are you expecting from this evening? Have you got any expectations? Or no? <laughs> <laughs> bit of meditation, is that all right? Yeah, a bit of Dhamma talk afterwards, a bit of Q&A, yeah, kind of usual stuff. Okay, okay, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Time it, okay. Oh, that's like looking right there. Can you actually see that? I can, uh, I can see something. I can see a long, thin, <laughs> long, thin strip. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's seven. It's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, shall we start? Then? Yeah. Are you all ready? Yeah. yeah. So let's uh, do some meditation. Again. Maybe I'll just, um, I don't know if I should say something beforehand about meditation before we get started because uh, we can always uh, talk about the topic of meditation a little bit. Maybe that's useful just to get some background and things. Uh, and one of the, um, the things about meditation practice that I think often people get wrong here. Yeah, is that it's supposed to be a pleasant experience. Yeah, It's supposed to enhance your life uh, rather than detract from your life and make your life worse. Uh, and uh, this is something that I think people often don't quite get. They think that meditation is some kind of ascetic or yogic practice uh, uh, where you have to kind of maybe sit in pain or you have to have, you know, go through difficult experience. You have to have the dark night of the soul and that kind of stuff. And then can finally you break through at the other end because bang, dark night of the soul and you kind of go through some difficult things. Uh, but that actually is nothing about the dark night of the soul in the words of the Buddha. Yeah, there's nothing about that at all. Uh, the way the Buddha explains meditation practice uh, uh, is you start off with sila. Uh, yeah, it's partly what sila means, basically ethics and kindness and these kind of things. I'll talk a bit more about that later on. Uh, and from that sila, you feel good about yourself. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. If you, if you live well, you tend to feel good about yourself. And then you go, yeah, I'm living well. Not in a kind of egotistical sense, but in a sense of just being quietly satisfied with your own life. Uh, and because you are satisfied with how you live, then when you close your eyes, uh, uh, there's possibility for joy to arise. When you start watching the breath, you do your meditation practice, regardless of what that meditation is, uh, joy can often arise in the mind. Uh, and then from the joy comes more joy, from that comes tranquility, comes more happiness, and eventually you go to samadhi and insight and all of these kind of things. Uh. But what is so fascinating about this, if you, that sequence is all about happiness. Yeah? And if you start out your meditation practice with having a lot of suffering and pain and problems, uh, you're never going to get to the happiness. Uh. So the kind of critical thing in the beginning is to find this middle way where we don't torture the body, uh, nor indulgence is not such a big problem when you meditate anyway because you're sitting with your eyes closed. Uh, but uh, not torturing the body is really the important thing. Uh. But if you get that right uh, and you kind of find that where your body kind of settles down and starts to disappear, uh, and then the mind comes into the focus because the body disappears, the senses disappear, uh, and then you kind of get the attitude right. Uh, you have to have like a positive attitude. Uh, yeah, if you have a negative attitude, the meditation is not going to go very far. Uh, sometimes if you have a negative attitude, go and have a cup, cup of tea first. Uh, don't have a beer, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what you do. <laughs> have a cup of tea instead. Uh, and then come back later on when you feel more, when you feel better about things. Uh, this is such a basic thing. Yeah, it's so, and in many ways, it should be so obvious. Uh, the Buddha taught the middle way. Uh, have you heard anyone not heard about the middle way? Huh? Everyone heard about the middle way? Huh? Okay, well, that's really good. They're really well educated. That's excellent. Huh? So the middle way means no torturing. And yet, that's what a vast number of Buddhists, what they do, they start off by torturing themselves. Huh? And then they get nowhere. And they wonder what is going on. And they give up on meditation. Huh? And they end up becoming Christians or atheists or whatever. It's certainly not Buddhists anymore because Buddhism sucks. And Buddhism is really bad. Huh? <laughs> this is what happens. Huh? So anyway, let's try this out and see what happens. So, so uh, hello. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Please come in there. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so uh, let's just uh, start off by just, uh, uh, first of all, just close your eyes. Uh, You will notice that when you close your eyes, you're already shutting so much of the world out uh, that it already starts to make you peaceful because so much of the input you normally have is kind of let go of at this particular point. Uh. And then always start the meditation off by feeling the body, uh, making sure, first of all, that you are nice and comfortable. Uh. Again, this is really important to be comfortable, to be at ease, uh, so the body can fade away during the meditation practice. Uh. And 
the heart of the comfort of meditation is to be relaxed and to be at ease and not to have any tensions in the body uh, but to kind of allow the body to feel good uh, and then when the body feels really nice and really bright uh, then it tends to fade away and that's what we're trying to do in the meditation practice uh, to start off by just have a general attention on the body uh, and feel if there is any problem anywhere, any tensions, any pains, any stress or whatever kind, uh, and just very gently have a positive attitude towards yourself, a sense of compassion and kindness and care, uh, and as you do that you allow those tensions to go. Uh. And the uh, uh, trick of this very beginning of the meditation uh, is always just to have a sense of gentleness towards yourself, uh, gentleness towards the body, uh, and to be patient, uh, to sit back with the right kind of attitude uh, and allow things to release themselves. Uh, and as you do so, uh, you start to feel this uh, beginning of the pleasure of meditation practice.
mind and please stay with the body until you feel completely relaxed. Uh, one of the important principles of uh, Buddhism is that the body and the mind are very much connected to each other. Uh, if you relax the body, uh, you also relax the mind. Uh, it is a mind that tends to control the body. Uh, but by focusing on the body, uh, we can let go of the control and relax everything. Uh, so just allow things to be here. Uh, be very gentle when you do this. Uh, no force is required at all. Uh, the fast path is always the patient path. Uh. And to be able to relax fully, uh, it is so important to have the right attitude to the present moment. Uh, so sometimes you have to encourage yourself just a little bit, uh, like nudge your mind, if you like, in the right direction. Uh, sometimes just think uh, what a wonderful thing it is uh, to be able just to sit down peacefully uh, with a group of like-minded people. Uh, and you can be absolutely sure that the people who come to an occasion like this, uh, they are good people. Uh, they are people who are trying to do something good for themselves uh, and good for the, wor the world around you. Uh. And what a wonderful thing it is to be able to share the space with people like that uh, in peace. Uh, do something good for yourself, do something good for the world. Uh. And then just sit back with that beautiful thought in your heart uh, and allow yourself to feel even more peaceful.
as your body relaxes properly, uh, you find that your mental content comes into focus. Uh, please don't try to control your mind. Uh, allow your mind to be here. Uh, your job is to be the observer rather than the controller. Uh, the less you control, the more you just are the passive observer, uh, the better it is. Uh, imagine yourself a passenger on the train. Uh, as a passenger on the train, you cannot control the speed or anything else. Uh, all you can do is look at the scenery as it passes by. Uh, no control. Uh, in the same way, in the meditation practice, uh, you're like a passenger. Uh, you're watching and observing things coming and going, uh, thoughts, whatever else there is. Uh, no control, uh, just allowing it to be. Uh. If you get this part of the meditation right, uh, you will notice how delightful it is uh, just to allow the world to flow by uh, without controlling anything, uh, allowing things to arise and pass away, uh, whatever it is, uh, coming into your mind and then going out again. Uh, no reaction, uh, no judgment, uh, nothing is right, nothing is wrong. Uh, and as you do so, the energy starts to accumulate in the mind. Uh, because you're no longer depleting the mind by doing too much. Uh, you just feel that sense of 
uh, freedom and delight that comes from doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. If you are able to feel the delight of just sitting still and peaceful like this, uh, then you are gradually turning the present moment into the pleasant moment. Uh, and notice that uh, as that happens, uh, mindfulness is drawn to the present moment uh, because wherever there is delight, uh, the mind is always drawn to that. Uh, and this is how mindfulness comes to be. Uh, and this is really the beginning of meditation proper.
Now we are getting close to the end of the meditation. <laughs> uh, before we get to the end, uh, I will ask you to review the meditation as it has happened so far. Uh, how do you feel now compared to when you started out? Uh, if you feel a little bit more at ease and peaceful, uh, if you find that your mindfulness has become more established, uh, if you find even a degree of stillness in the mind, uh, ask yourself why that is the case. Uh, try to understand the causality which is the meditation practice. Uh, and as you do so, uh, you get insight into the process of meditation itself. Uh, Okay, so that's the uh, meditation for now, so please uh, come out. <laughs>